Yes. <gasps> that is disgusting. Hey, Festy Besties. It's your girl. I'm back at it again. Um, it is Wednesday and we are, uh, I don't know, six days away from moving or some shit. And, um, oh my God, wait. Maggie. Look at her little paws. Tell me that's not the cutest thing ever. Where's Maggie? Anyways, um, this is a state of our house right now. Not great. Not great. We've like given up on cleaning the kitchen. It's just like a shit show and will be that until we move. So I'm about to do more packing here. And uh, I gotta tackle this little fake fireplace thingy, my bobber. Oh, look how cute this picture is. This is the first picture that John and I ever took together. We're pretty sure at least. This was our senior year of high school, or no, junior year of high school. And we dated a little bit um, freshman year, but I don't think we took any pictures, or if we did, they're gone. Quality yeah, with our flip phones. What phone did I have? No, it wasn't a flip phone, no, my phone. It was, quick, it was, it was like one of those like things that had a touch screen that like flipped open and had like a keyboard or something, I think. It definitely wasn't an iPhone. It was some, it yeah, a sidekick maybe. No, I didn't ever had a sidekick. I always wanted a sidekick. Uh -huh. My little boyfriend in um, middle school had a sidekick and I was always like, damn, I want one of those. Then I had Androids for a while until I got an iPhone and then now Steve Jobs owns my soul. So yeah, I'm gonna pack up that and going to live our best lives, you know? I'm hoping to get one more vlog up before I move, but I don't really know like what it would be about other than us literally just packing up a bunch of crap. I'm afraid to open that freaking cabinet because I just know it's gonna be a disaster. A disaster. One of my many talents is creating excessive noise. All right, John? Okay, this is what we're working with. Honestly, not as bad as I remember it being. I thought it was gonna be way worse. So not that bad. Just like a lot of candles and um, wax melts and incense. You're doing your corns, Dee Dee. Mm. That smells so good. Check that out. If you ever are looking for uh, wax melts, go to Walmart. They have so many, or at least they used to. I haven't been in like a year, but they make so many of them and they all smell so good. Ugh, but there's like dust everywhere. Your hair's uneven. You look dusty. Your hair is uneven. You look dusty. Tell me what I should talk about. I um don't know what to talk about sometimes. So leave a comment down below of what you want me to talk about for when I'm like doing random shit like this and then I can talk to you guys about something because right now I don't know what to say. It can be like random questions, Topics. I'll I'll talk your ear off if you give me a chance. Okay? So just hit me up and let me know. Oh, one person, um, I actually just uploaded my vlog um today, and one person asked if I was, because I know I told you that I was moving in later than when I closed on the house. Um when John and I closed. And so 
they asked if I was paying for the mortgage and rent for those months. And the answer is yes. And it sucked, right? The way it works out though, is we actually, the, the date that we closed when we wrote the check for the down payment, we paid for the, the mortgage for that month. Um, so we're technically didn't, didn't have to make another mortgage payment until June 1st and we'll already be in there. So that's good. Um, but yes, we have been paying for our house and paying rent here. And it's hard because right now with the market being so like jacked up, you don't really like get a chance to be like, okay, well, yeah, but you know, we're closing or whatever, but we don't want to close until this date. Like it's really not in your hands. It's um, still, in my opinion, a seller's market. I mean, not as much as it was last year, I would say. Um, I mean, we were touring homes that were going like, you know, all cash, 80,000 over asking without even seeing the house. And I'm just like, that is literally absurd to me. But um, yeah, you, you, you don't like get a whole lot of say of, of, of like, oh, well, I can't move in till this date or I don't want to close until this date um, because they don't care. They'll find someone else who will do what they want. And um, yeah, so you kind of just have to either, you know, suck it up and figure out a way to make it work if you can, or try to find something that is, um, you know, lines up with your timing, but it's really hard to do. And our lease here ended in May. And originally we were thinking, you know, if we didn't find a house, by then could we go like month month to month and she wouldn't let us do that we had to resign and obviously every landlord is different so your landlord may let you do that to try and get the timing correct but um we were planning to <laughs> if we couldn't find a house in time we were planning to move out of this one and move in to my dad's house for however long a few months weeks whatever uh, which he was really nice and was like, yeah, that's totally fine. But obviously that would suck because you're like moving twice, you know, not entirely, but you still have to like bring your shit there. Oh, perfect. Thanks. Yeah. So it's not ideal, obviously. But yeah, it is, it is really stressful. I feel extremely lucky though, because this was the one and only house we put an offer in. I'm honestly surprised that they accepted ours because I think they had like six or seven and we just got really, really lucky and they accepted ours on the first house that we put an offer in. Um, we were thinking about putting an offer in on another house a few months prior because that house had been sitting on the market for like, I don't know, three months or something, which is pretty unheard of. Hold on, I need to change my battery. It was sitting on the market forever because we think it was priced too high. And the woman apparently selling it was like, well, I'm not budging, I'll hold on to it till as long as I need to until I get my full offer. And it was just something we weren't willing to pay that price for. So anyways, yeah, it's a crazy world out there. <laughs> if you guys were buying a house right now, uh, may the power be with you. And it's so annoying to hear this. I'm so sick of people like, I'm like, oh, just be patient. But I guess that's kind of like the only way to do it. It was interesting. Last night I was watching a vlog um, by Megan Hughes. If you don't know who she is, she's an icon. But I was watching her vlog and um, her and her husband are in the process of trying to buy a house in Vermont. And she was talking about how it sometimes feels like almost wrong to try and like play this game of like, cause the housing market is so insane and people are outbidding each other and spending way over what the um, house is valued at and, you know, wavering or waiving uh, inspections and um, all this kind of stuff. And it's crazy because if you don't do that, then you pretty much miss out. Like if you don't do it, someone else is going to do it. And that was her kind of argument is like, I think in a sense she felt bad of like trying to like play this like almost sneaky, not really sneaky, but like kind of like brutal game of being in the housing market right now because you're just adding to the fire obviously. And it sucks, but it's so true. Like if you, it's, she said like either um, you have to eat or be eaten and it's, so true and it shouldn't be like that it's absurd and and so wrong in so many ways but it's just how it is right now and it sucks like it really does and i feel extremely fortunate to be able to afford a home right now to have been able to buy a home um because i just i know that that is not the reality for so many people especially young people you know it's like millennials are getting screwed 
in pretty much every asset or facet um, in this country and you know the housing market being one of them I know millennials aren't the only ones obviously but like young people are a huge chunk of that you know that demographic that is struggling and I just feel for people um, it really sucks and it's not fair and I don't know like what how you know how it's gonna get better it really does seem like it's impossible for so many and I it just feel really bad it's totally fucked up you know how insane prices are right now and then interest rates are so high i mean our interest rate is pretty high compared to what it what they were like a year or two ago um but you know from the time that we closed to what it is now it's even higher it's like multiple percentages higher it's just absurd and there's people who are like going in there who have you know hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash to just like put down on a down payment or you know just buy the house in cash which is ridiculous and so it just it's really skewed right now and it sucks and i don't know how they're gonna fix it or you know what's gonna happen they talk about like this the bubble bursting but i just don't see that happening at least in colorado i mean like compared to last year the prices have like slowed a little they're not like necessarily going down but they've slowed a little it's not as insane as it was but i think that's mostly due to the fact that the uh interest rates have gone up so much and therefore like people don't want to sell their home because if you know they have a good rate they're not going to go sell their home and then buy a new home for a ridiculous rate that they're that it is now so a lot of pe less people are selling their home a lot of people don't want to buy right now because it's so high it's wild and i feel bad for young people especially. Not to mention student loans are about to be uh, kicking back up again. So that's great. I was all excited for them to be canceled and John says they're not gonna be canceled. You think so? He's, he really has no I hope. think more, more than likely they will not be canceled to what our current president had initially promised. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. The U.S. is about to default. <laughs> like, I hope I'm wrong, but... He says, I hope I'm wrong, but... The U.S. is about to default, and, um... Yeah, it's just a party over here. It was so interesting. The other day I was uh, scrolling through TikTok, and I saw this person who was from the U.S. So, like, if, you're, if you live outside of the United States, what do you think of the U.S. right now? Like, would you want to visit here on a vacation? And all these people who were living outside the US were stitching them and they were like saying, no, I have no interest in coming to the, to the US. It seems really dangerous. It's really scary. Like you guys are embarrassing right now. Like what the hell is going on over there? So if you're watching this and you're not living in the United States, I am curious, what are your thoughts about America? Um, like what does your community and culture um, think about us because yeah, I'm not gonna lie, things are a bit whacked over here. It's definitely uh, interesting times we're living in. Okay, I pretty much packed up my whole scent box. So that's good. These I'm gonna throw away because they just don't work. They never really have worked, so I'm gonna throw those out. Got my incense here. Yeah, okay, cool. So all my candles are pretty much in one box, ready to go. And my incense. And these candles like don't work, a lot of them. So I just toss them, I don't know. I've been talking for like 10 years, so I'm gonna go now and do some more packing. I'll talk to you later. Hey, it's Thursday and I just got off work. I'm going to meet my friend for dinner and I'm here. So I just thought I'd check in, say what up. I'm so hungry and very excited to eat. Oh crap, I just realized I left my food from lunch out. Great, all right, anyways, maybe I'll vlog inside, but maybe not. Just wanna let you know this next clip is uh, discussing pet loss. So if that's something that you don't wanna watch, go ahead and skip to this timestamp. I'll put it on the screen. I look rough, <laughs> my eyes are puffy. Um. Today's been a really crappy day. Uh, at around 1.30 or 2 in the morning, my mom called me and um, told me that um, our family dog, her, her and my stepdad's dog, one of her dogs, had to be um, put down 
like six months ago he was diagnosed with a heart murmur and he uh he started to be on medication for it and then about six weeks ago he was breathing really weird one night just acting weird so they took him into the er and he spent the day at the hospital because um, he had fluid in his lungs and they took out the fluid and they were thinking that it was heart disease um and they estimated that it was probably i guess there was like different levels to it it was like on the lower level and so they weren't sure though until they did an echocardiogram so then like the next day my mom took him back, did the echocardiogram. They found out that he actually wasn't just heart disease. He was in heart failure, which I, I believe is like the last stage of heart disease or whatever. I don't really understand it, but um, they estimated that he had about a year or two at the most probably left, but they said it could be less than that. Obviously they just don't know. So they put him on lots of meds. A diuretic which pulls liquid out of your lungs and other meds i don't know so he was on daily meds and he was doing okay um still acting fine and stuff but you know panting more breathing heavily and then um about two weeks ago i think it seemed like he was getting a little worse they brought him back to the vet his vet up to the diuretic um and that seemed to be helping more and then I think yesterday evening, um, he started acting really weird and was, um, not really eating, ate his food and then threw up and was breathing really, really heavy and was trying to, like, hide under the bed and didn't want to be on their bed. He he's always sleeps on their bed and didn't really want to be around anyone and was just, my mom said, just really uncomfortable and he couldn't, like, breathe very well so she brought him to the ER and they basically said that there's tons of fluid in his lungs and they think that perhaps like something in his heart may have collapsed because it basically went from like he wasn't fine obviously but he was like okay to like really bad so quickly and they you know said that they could keep him there for a few days and do tons of like little treatments and medicines and whatever to try and take the fluid out of his lungs and help him but he was only maybe gonna get like another week if even if they did that because the second that they pull liquid out of his lungs or fluid that it would just his lungs would refill and so his little quality of life would be pretty miserable so they put him down <laughs> really early in the morning, around like 2 a.m. He was like the best little dog. He was only nine years old. He was a Morky and, you know, I feel like they have a pretty long lifespan. So relatively speaking, he was pretty young. It just sucks because we thought he, we had maybe at least six more months with him at least. And it all happened within like five or six weeks. And we've had him, we rescued him when he was like six months old. So we've had him basically his whole life. And he's just the best dog. He's so sweet. He's so loving. And he's so happy and funny. And she has another dog who um, we rescued. And she was very, very timid, scared, had been in horrible conditions. And he really helped her come out of her shell. And they were like really bonded, like best friends that can't be without each other and luckily once he got diagnosed my mom knew that for Lila the other one that um when Sammy went she would be really upset so they actually rescued another little doggy a few weeks ago and so all three of them got to be together for a few weeks before Sammy before Samson left it sucks because I went and visited my mom she lives in Arizona I went and visited her in uh, last month, I think, and I saw him, but I didn't think that would be the last time, but it was. I just didn't get to say bye to him. My heart is broken. I'm going to miss him a lot. John and I really loved him. We um, actually got to live with us. Him and his sister Lila got to live with us uh, when we were in college for a year, and he was 
like my, I mean, he was obviously my family dog, but I just was so obsessed with him. I loved him so much. He was the best guy ever. Everyone loved him. He was so sweet and happy. Losing a dog is just the worst thing ever. Losing a pet in general. They're just, they're literally like a part of your family, you know? Just can't imagine like making that decision of having to put your animal down. Obviously you don't want them to suffer. He was suffering pretty bad, luckily for not that long. Like I said, it, he was okay. And then all of a sudden yesterday something happened and he started acting really weird. But it still sucks having to make that decision of saying goodbye. And you just hope like you're doing the right thing, you know? I just feel bad for my mom. I know how much she loves him. <laughs> How hard it was to say bye to him way sooner than we had thought. I don't understand why dogs can't live as long as us. Why are their little lives so much shorter than ours? And just the best the unconditional love they give you. There's like nothing else like it. When my mom said that when she came home, Lila was like walking around looking for him. And you can tell she's just confused as to where he went and why he's gone. And I really hope that the new little, little, new little guy, Chip, is his name. They, him and Lila can bond, but I know it's not going to replace Samson. He's the reason we have Maggie. We want, he's a, a Morky and we wanted another Morky like Samson of our own. We got Maggie. She's pretty darn close. I mean, she's mostly Maltese, but her personality is very similar. They look very similar, except for she's white. I wanted to read this um, poem to you guys. I feel like a lot of you have probably already heard of it, but um, if you haven't, it's called Rainbow Bridge. And I love it. It's very sweet. It says, Just this side of heaven is a place called Rainbow Bridge. When a dog dies that has been especially close to someone here, that dog goes to Rainbow Bridge. There are meadows and hills for all our special friends so they can run and play together. There's plenty of food, water, and sunshine, and our friends are warm and comfortable. All the dogs who had been ill and old are restored to health and vigor. Those who were hurt are maimed are made whole again and strong just as we remember them in our dreams of days and times gone by. The dogs are happy and content except for one small thing. They miss someone very special to them who had to be left behind. They all run and play together but the day comes when one suddenly stops and looks in the distance. His eyes are intent, his eager body quivers, and suddenly he begins to run from the group, flying over the green grass, his legs carry him faster and faster. You have been spotted, and when you and your beloved dog finally meet, you claim together a joyous re reunion, never to be parted again. The happy kisses rain upon your face, your hands again caress his beloved head. And you look once more into the trusting eyes of your dog, so long gone from your life, but never absent from your heart. And the two of you cross Rainbow Bridge together. So I didn't feel like I could just like not talk about this, obviously. So if I'm sorry if this is sad and you didn't want to hear it. You guys are always really sweet in the comments and stuff. So I wanted to tell you. Okay, I'm going to go now. <laughs> Hey queens and kings, um, I just got a freaking mount for my car. Look at me. I am a true vlogger now. Nothing can stop me now. It's the next day. Last time I talked to you, I was crying on camera. I think that was my first time crying on, ca on the camera. Well, at least on this channel. Love that milestone. Um, but it, it's actually like very therapeutic to talk to you guys especially because oh my god I feel like this is shaking really bad what the hell am I gonna do I don't know how this is gonna work I've never used one of these before but we'll see yeah it's it's really great to have a community that I can talk to this channel is obviously really small and so I feel like there's no haters <laughs> on it um, which is nice so it's just nice to be able to talk to you guys and I'm doing a little bit better. Uh, still really sad. And what's so annoying is that I don't, I think I've told you guys this before, but I don't have good dreams like literally ever. I'm not, I'm not being sarcastic. I never have good dreams. I don't dream that often, but when I do dream, they're always bad dreams. 
in the last two nights I've been having dreams about dead dogs and I can't quite like remember exactly what they were but I remember it was just like about putting dogs down about dogs dying because my mom you know had called me at like 1 30 in the morning and I um, was up till about three or so and then I took a Xanax because I was extremely unwell and I took a Xanax so that makes you very, at least for me, very tired. And so I was able to go back to sleep, but then I just had dreams about dying dogs. And then last night, same thing. I didn't take a Xanax, but I uh, just went to bed and had more dreams about dying dogs. So that's just really fucking annoying. But anyways, um, I'm doing a little bit better. I just miss him. This is so bad. My camera is like really wobbly. I don't know how other people do this. Like I don't know what they use in order for it to not do this. So great. Yeah, this is horrible. The whole thing is like, I don't think this is gonna work. Maybe they attach it to their dash and set up to the window. Oh no, yeah, I don't know. I don't think this is gonna work very well. Whatever, I'm just gonna keep going for right now. Um, it's Saturday right now. And um, I'm freaking starving. We have nothing in our house to eat. I'm gonna go get Jamba Juice because I really want a smoothie. My head is killing me and I don't have any Advil with me, so that's great. Um, I think I've just got like a really bad headache, to be honest, because I've been crying so much. <laughs> Yesterday I was crying like on and off all day and my head just like really hurts I think because of it so that's great <sighs> but today I am uh, packing a bunch of stuff we are supposed to get the keys for our house tomorrow I don't exactly know what time or how that's gonna work we're still waiting to hear back from the people know why they can't just like give us an answer so yeah we're packing up stuff we were like I would say maybe 90% of the way packed um, so that's really good but I have like so much laundry to do my bedroom is a complete disaster there's crap everywhere and I need to do laundry so I'm gonna go and uh, do that real quick after I get Jamba Juice but um, I'm also getting a face peel today uh at first i'm getting a lash fill and then my girl has been on a mission to help me with my acne and my acne scarring uh so i'm getting a vi peel i've gotten one before a long time ago to be honest i don't know how much it did because i think it was because i only got one i mean i think it helped a little but my face just hates me and i think you need to get multiple for them to really work so I'm getting my second one today, as well as a dermaplane, which is where they take like a razor and shave your face. Uh, and, it, and it's really good to get off like dead skin. And I asked my girl if she'd be okay if I filmed some of it, and she was down. So I'm going to film the face part and show you guys like what it's like and then basically the first time I did it I peeled like crazy on the like day two and day three I peeled a lot and uh so I'm expecting that to happen again you look like a snake it's it's kind of crazy honestly but anyways yeah that's pretty much all I have to say right now I um still feel really sad I'm really tired like I just haven't been sleeping that good I wish I could like go take a nap, but I gotta pack. I love taking naps. I usually take naps on Saturdays. I love taking daytime naps. It's just so good. Although John's about to go out and play disc golf with one of our friends. So I'm wondering if I can take a nap while he's gone. <laughs> That's so bad, I should be packing, but I'm so tired. I just really wanna lay down. And if he's not there, then he'll never know. Cause I'm pretty positive he does not watch these vlogs. It's finally nice out. It's been raining for like two weeks straight and not being sarcastic. It was so annoying and it's finally sunny. So that's good. I'm really hoping that it stays sunny for the next few days so that we're not moving in the rain because 
that would kind of suck. Ooh, there's this freaking zit right here that I really want to get rid of, but I'm gonna let my esthetician pop it for me. Hopefully she'll do it. She is very anti-skin picking, and I am very pro-skin picking. I think my camera's gonna overheat if it's just sitting in the sun. Let's put some AC on, but see, I don't think you could have AC while you're vlogging. Ooh, John's out playing disc golf. Crap, that means I probably won't have time to take a nap before he gets home. It's 11 o'clock right now. I have a lash appointment at 12, and then I have to go home and then come back at like three for my facial thingy, for my peel. And I was gonna try and take a nap between like one and three, but I think he'll be home by then. Damn it. Oh my god, is this person ordering the entire menu? Thank you, Jumbo. Can I get started for you? Hi, can I please have a um, small pink star? Anything else? And then one impossible hand witch. All right, is that all for you today? Yes, please. All right, that'd be 11.46 at the window. Okay, thanks. My car's making a weird noise, so that's great. My car's really old, but she needs to last. It's okay, little baby. Keep pushing along, baby. Don't make your weird noises. I don't know why you're making weird noises. Oh my God, yesterday, so cringe. So yesterday, John and I went out to get some dinner and I forgot my case for my Invisalign. So I just popped it out and then wrapped it in a napkin. And then we left and we were like out of the parking lot about ready to get back on the main road. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh shit, I forgot my Invisalign. So we like flew back and I was like, they're gonna throw it out because it was like a cloth napkin that it was like just wrapped in. So I'm sure they just you know, took it and put it in the um, bin or whatever. So I go back in there and I'm like, ha, they're like, did you forget something? I'm like, yeah, my Invisalign. And they're like, oh, I was like, is this in a napkin? Oh crap, my thing is gonna overheat. Okay, I'll have to tell you this later. Okay, I have my lashes done. I'm going back in two hours to get the um, peel. But anyways, as I was telling you my story, so I was at the restaurant, I put my retainers or my Invisalign in a napkin. I leave, I'm like, oh shit, I forgot them. We turn around really quick, I go up to him, I'm like, yeah, I left my retainers, they were in a cloth napkin. He's like, okay, well, so we start like searching through this freaking trash can full of cloth napkins. I'm like feeling them all if I can feel anything. I'm like, they're not there. And he's like, I might have put them in this like bin thing. He like is looking through them and all of a sudden I see him and he's like holding my retainers in my in his hand. And I was like, hey, yo, you're touching them. I was like, I'm so sorry. Thank you so much. I felt so bad, but he found them. He's like, they fell on the ground. I was like, I don't care. I'll wash them. Thank you. So I had to go home and wash them, which I wash them every day. Well, like I rinse them multiple times a day, like every time I take them out, put them back in, I rinse them. But at night, every night, I put them in like a solution with like a little fizzy tablet thingy that cleans them. And uh, so that gets rid of like everything. But I was like, shit, if I lose these, because I, I changed them every Thursday and it was Friday. So I had only had this new one in for a day. And I was like, if I lose them, I'm going to have to go to the next one and that's going to really hurt. <laughs> So I'm grateful that I found them. But anyways, I'm going home. I gotta do a lot of laundry. There's clothes everywhere. So I gotta do a lot of laundry. And then I will be back at my uh, place to get my facial. And she's down to let me film it, so. Okay, we're here. This is Katie. Hi. She works at Lash and & Company and she there's a few locations in Denver. But she is the best. If you ever need lashes or anything face related, she doesn't, well, you don't do injections, no. right? But they do injections, um, tans, makeup, like permanent makeup, eyebrows, the whole thing. So if you're ever feeling ugly, <laughs> stop. She's your you're girl. Not ugly. My face is wrecked um so she's gonna do a peel what are, wait, what are you doing first we're doing a dermaplane first okay dermaplane first turn. explain to the people what a dermaplane is okay so a dermaplane is gonna take off janelle's top three layers of her dead skin so we're double exfoliating with a mid-depth peel mm. which helps reduce the redness that she has here the redness that she has here on this other side as well as control the sebum production, which which clogs the pores. Love that. So the peel is gonna help eliminate the acne bacteria that she has clogged in her pores right now. 
like in here, this little nice guy down there. Great. We're gonna pop this one. Yes. Um, then the dermaplane will also help because we're taking off the three layers of our dead skin. So the peel is gonna penetrate better. The VI peel that we're going to use is VI peel Purify, which is a mid-depth peel. Mid-depth peel. So there's like different um There's different types. layers of the skin. Mm -hmm. so and different types of peels. Is this like a medium type? Like there's something that can go even deeper into the skin, mm -hmm. I'm assuming? Okay. So that would be something like a dermatologist could do for you or um, like a CO2 laser, which would just pretty much give you a brand new face. Oh, we want that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so first we're gonna cleanse, double cleanse with a gentle cleanser. I did this peel like... I think January? Yeah, You've done two peels so far. No, just one. This will be your second one. Yeah, 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 yeah. this is my second one. And um, I will warn you, if you do it, it will itch <laughs> like the craziest thing you've ever felt in your life, the night that you get it. It yeah, will, will. the night that you get it, you're pretty itchy. So itchy. Um, it's important for peels not to itch or scratch because it could you could cause hyperpigmentation or scar. Yeah, and that's really hard for me um, to not pick in my face, as we all know. You've been better. Yeah, I've been trying really hard, and I have been icing versus picking. <laughs> That's what Katie tells me to do. And also, I use a um, what are the lance? A lancet. A lancet. That's what we use to get this guy. Mm, feels so good. Ooh. Did you, you already see pop it? it? I just squeezed it and it popped yes. out. Yes. We love okay. that. Take a deep breath in. What is that? So this is acetone, degreases the face. It's kind of an astringent, so You're we don't spread acetone any bacteria. On my face? Yeah. Degreases. Oh, can I do that every day? No. <laughs> You'll be a peely mess. Hmm. There's some shit going on over there. Let people bring that out. I literally squeezed him and he came out. Hell yeah, I knew he was ready. That one, you can pop him. Mm -hmm. I w wonder why my left cheek is so much worse. Do you sleep on that side? Um, I sleep on both. I like flop around. Did you see it? Mm hmm. You're welcome, people. I know all you sickos want that. <laughs> all right. I'll start on this side. Turn, please. This makes your face feel so smooth, you guys. If you don't want to do a peel, you should totally do this because I feel like it's not that much of a commitment. Like, you just, it doesn't, like, it, like, make your face red or anything afterwards. And you can do it in the summertime. Mm-hmm. Your makeup lays flat. Yeah, your makeup lays way better. Your products will absorb better into your skin. Don't do this on your own. Don't do it on your own with the scalpel. Come to a professional. I love the sound. Right? So all of that's Janelle's um, Bella's hair, and then the white is her peach fuzz, or her dead skin. Yum. And then she wipe, wipes off on the towel and shows me after. Mm. So since it's your second peel that we're gonna do, I'm gonna go a little bit more aggressive on your dermaplane to get more dead skin off. Cool. You don't have a lot of dead skin coming off because you used tretinoin, but some is better than none. Oh, I used that thing you gave me, that two-step peel. Yeah. I actually really liked it. It's nice, I huh? actually feel like it helped. Mm hmm And usually I don't think anything helps. <laughs> Stop. I, after the day after, I was like, oh my God, my skin looked really good the it day after. It looks good, huh?
That is disgusting. You guys. Crazy, huh? Ew. It's the best part. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah. I love that. My face is really smooth now. Now we're going to occlude your sensitive spots from the peel. So just protect them. Okay. I do. The one thing I liked about the peel last time is it yeah. made me look kind of tan. <laughs> More like just red, but I was like, oh, color. <laughs> You're like, ooh, I have a nice color. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do the corner of the eyes. What are you using? A and D. It kind of acts as like a barrier. Okay. For like the sensitive spots that get a little raw when they peel. Got it. The corners of the ears. Sometimes I think I accidentally get like tried no one on there because it seems to get like dry right there. It dries on and it hurts. Yeah. And then the nose and the mouth last. So it gets numb because there's um, phenol in it, which is just, like a numbing agent. Mm. Look at these cute tips, aren't they fun? Oh my god, pointy. Since normally if we didn't do the dry plan, you do a prep peel, tell it, which um, degreases the face. This is a peel. Purify. Put it in this little cup. It's like science. It is. We're like scientists. We're chemists, actually. Chemists. Mm -hmm. And then if you don't hold the top, it'll pop like champagne. Oh, cute. You guys should serve, serve champagne here. <laughs> we get asked that sometimes. Okay, I remember this smelling so bad. I love the smell. It smells like NyQuil. Oh, this one we don't have to mix. I'm using a different peel oh, on you than last time. Really? So this peel helps with active acne and helps reduce redness. What was the last one we did? Um, precision plus with Purify. So the Purify helps kill the bacteria. So this one's more like acne related? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, they're both acne related. Oh. Just this one doesn't have the um, mixers. Okay. So with the peel, it's important to start light. So you're gonna go one nice coat up this way. Wow, it makes your face red quick. Mm -hmm. This one has a little bit more salicylic in it. And then you come down this way on the face. See, it almost gives you like a tan. <laughs> Gives you a nice color. So the next pass you go in horizontally. So you want to ah. press harder and go this way. You can't like get this stuff on your own, huh? No. That'd be dangerous. People It'd are be doing dangerous. this by themselves. You need a medical director to buy any type of chemical peel. Gotcha. Look at he's already shrinking. Good die, bitch. <laughs> That's what you get. For peels, it's important to get under the neckline because a lot of women, kind of, this gets neglected. Mm. Makes sense. So you're frosting here. That means you've already, the peel's already reached its deepest level, so we'll just avoid it. Frosting. So we really want to focus on that. Just push it in. And here. It's your struggle spot. Mm -hmm. So what's in the solution? Salicylic acid, what else? Salicylic, phenol, um, TCA, there's one, joic acid, I like benzoyl how peroxide. I'm asking as if I know what any of those things are. <laughs> All I know is benzoyl peroxide and salicylic. Salicylic is what gives it the orange. Mm. So the nose you only want to do a couple of times. Look at all that. That's awesome. Ooh. And you're compressing really good. Good. Yes. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. So now that we've got all in every single direction now it's just like pushing it into the spots that's not frosted that we want to target like these ones that we really want to get rid of mm -hmm. this one has frosted this one has not yet so we'll push some more on him this one has not over the eyebrows mm. have you looked back at me 
times under the a couple times under the eyes. Want no wrinkles? Mm hmm. Okay. Now I want to put them over your eyebrows, forehead. If we can get those actives under control, we'll start microneedling. Ooh. Okay. That's it. Yep. Yay! Thank you. You're welcome. We'll check back tomorrow and see if we peeled. So here's what my face looks like. It's very red. And it's more like orange. I'll check back every day. Um, I think I'm gonna split the vlog though. This is, is already getting pretty long, I think. Anyways, we're about to go home. I'm really sad though. I just got sad again about Samson. Just miss him and I just feel like it's really setting in that he's gone and then won't be able to kiss his little cute nose. Or see his little happy face, his little waggy tail. But yeah, Katie is great. Like I said, she works at Lash and Company. There's multiple locations and she works in the Thornton one and then the uh, Parker one. So if you're in the Denver area and you're looking to get any services, I definitely highly recommend that place. Um, I think they're great. And I'll leave her Instagram down below. Um, if you want to check her out. I'm gonna go home and give my pups some kisses. Charlie's so sweet. He slept up by my next to my pillow the entire night last night, right up next to my pillow, and even like put his little sweet head on my pillow at some points. Because he knows that his mommy needs him. So he just was being such a good bear boy. Um I just got word from my realtor that we are good to go to get into the house tomorrow morning. We weren't expecting the people to clean it just because I don't know, I didn't expect them to do that. But they did. Apparently they hired professional cleaners to deep clean it, which I'm very grateful for because I was like, well, otherwise I'm just going to deep clean all of their crap after they live in there for free. So I'm grateful that they were able to get a uh, person in or people in to deep clean it, that's great. So that it's clean for when we go into it. So yeah, the weather is being stupid again. It was nice out, now it looks like it's about to rain. So lame, but it's pretty warm out, which is great. I'm about to go and import this footage and I'm curious to see what it looks like. I feel, feel like it's gonna look insane because I'm just looking at the camera, it's like, all right, well, I think that's gonna be it for this vlog. I've actually never closed out a vlog before. It feels kind of weird. I usually just like cut it off randomly, but I think I'm gonna cut it here and then start a new one um, and try to get this one up either like tonight or like tomorrow, probably tomorrow, but yeah. Okay, 